Hey everybody, Shaman Hawk here for Shamanic Lodge. Thought I'd do another series <clears throat> called, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Things We Deal With. <laughs> and uh, because people don't really think about the stuff that comes up. We, we, we don't share it, you know, we just want to give you the good parts, you know, but for a little look behind the scenes, you know, sometimes I'm going to call these cosmic bloopers, things just go wrong. I mean, just unbelievably wrong. Well, I, I look at it. That's my perception. It goes unbelievably wrong. Some people think of it as like, well, you know, you do all this really good stuff. Now this other stuff has to happen. It's that balance. And while I was working in the Asheville, North Carolina area, we was, I was on this one property where I built one of the peace uh, chambers, one of the domes. And actually, I helped uh, form what was called the first living vortex you know, in that area, and the only living vortex on the planet at that time. And I'll, I'll get into explaining what that is in another video, but we would do these great healings, we would do these great uh, ceremonies, these vision quests for people, and then some some of the most ridiculous bullshit would happen, like, right after that. Like, So we, anytime we had these great, great things coming, or we were doing, and the people were giving us awesome feedback, we're listening to it, and like, yeah, yeah. And then the better feedback we got, <laughs> it's like we we're just waiting for this. Uh oh, got to have something like this. Ooh, now that'll deserve this one, you know. Waiting for that to come back, and that became the the internal shamanic joke with the other shamans that I was working with in that area. And it's like they would talk about their great stuff that they would have happen, like oh, well, you know what that means, you know. And some of that was natural earth phenomenon, I guess. But the other thing about it is some of the ridiculous stuff that comes up with people. So on this uh, chapter of things we deal with, it's called the fear factor. And that's not the only one. There's a resentment factor, the envy factor, the um, you know, whatever else the ego can throw in there. But <clears throat> years, I can, it was the year of Hurricane Andrew. Or the, I think it was 91, 93. It all runs together. But I had gotten the visions from these off-planet beings, you know, to build these structures. Or this one structure. And, um, again, that's another long video story that I put in my book. But basically, these beings showed me this picture of a structure to build. And three nights in a row, and finally the third night, they drug me out of bed in my yard, give me dimensions. I'm like, hold on. We need a thing called money, resources. I just can't do this. Take care of my business. I had a real estate investment company then, construction company. Make that work where my wife can handle that. And I was married then. And I'm like, I'll just devote my time to this. Man, within two days, business was just awesome. Because we didn't have any business before that. And all the materials for that job was given to me by a superintendent on a construction site in downtown. Fort Lauderdale and I'm like okay but we did great vision work there I worked with some kids from Greenpeace it was just an awesome awesome site and some great work was done and things changed Hurricane Andrew came I lost all my businesses lost all kinds of stuff had to leave the property and then after that you know but I heard from the neighbors because a lot of them didn't know you know that it was there they're like, what was that satanic structure that you built? And I'm hearing this from people, some of them kind of like jokingly. And I'm like, what? I'm like, and they're like, yeah, man. People around were like so surprised. They said they found this satanic structure, you know, and they felt so sorry for your children. They wondered if your children are all right. I'm like, what? And the stories kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger because people keep fanning the fear fire. And I look at this, and it's like, wow. And I think of all the great stuff we did there. All the people that came there that just were trying to get their life in order. They came there with bad diagnosis. They came there with all kinds of problems, and they just kind of went away. And But that's the result. That's the rumors that went around. And then eventually it was destroyed by the city. And it's just unbelievable where people will go. Well, many years later... I'm in another country to the south of the United States uh, in a war zone. And some people wanted me, 
Oh, can't give too much detail. There was political upheaval. There was just it was just chaos. They said, "Could you build one of your peace chambers down there?" And uh, um, <laughs> the conditions were: we can't guarantee your safety. You might get kidnapped. You might get killed. Uh, but we really need one of these structures down there because we have this other political plan and blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? And again, it was made and uh, the people had donated to it. It was way in the outback off, you know, into this country. And uh, anyways, the, the, what I was dealing with then was the, oh, how to be kind with this. You know, you can go to some places and people in power can say anything and the people are like, oh, you know, and just totally freak out. Yeah, it was one of those places. And because of the war there, people were even more in fear. And then, of course, the church did its thing to keep fanning the fear fire. You know, I, I can't give too many details without like, painting an even worse picture for some people. But anyway, we did great work. The situation changed a lot in the country and in the hemisphere. Uh, and even years later, candidates for pres presidency of other countries would go to this structure to meditate, to get answers about their f political future and so on. Um, but at the same time, some of the locals would go in. You know, it was in the um just to look and put graffiti of not swastikas and just you know the whole fear fire thing try to try to do anything they could to desecrate it you know and but with i have to do another video on armaments yeah you can protect the site you know which people interpret as curses you know <laughs> poor fear factor uh, it gets ridiculous but one of the things that was put in there was this little figurine of a bull with these other things. <clears throat> and within that region, everybody was real familiar with the specific type of black magic voodoo, all this other stuff that, that was known within that region. You know, like a, with the, <clears throat> I used to live across the bay from Salem, North uh, Massachusetts. And you go in there and buy voodoo dolls and stuff. So, People from the European descent, uh, descendants, they know what a voodoo doll is. So you look at that and, like, and you see pins in it. It's like, oh, we know what that is. Well, down in Central and South America, they have other forms. And when people down there look at it, they know what that is. And it was causing a little bit of a disturbance, you know, within some of the locals who were with our project. And I told the guy that was down there, I said, look, what you do is you have everybody you know, <clears throat> bring some twigs in a fire and whatnot and uh, put this figure in there and you just send that energy source, you know, of that mad, bad intent back to the this, this source. So they took that bull, you know, that figurine, put it in the fire and then everybody said, we just want this to go back to its source. Well, on that project, you know, we had a neighbor and they didn't really like our project. They didn't like the fact that we were doing anything on that property way out there in the middle of nowhere. And uh, <clears throat> coincidentally, the guy uh, that lived there burned in his house. Okay, another coincidence. And so anyways, the people who were with that project backed out. And then... When they went in, the, uh, the the fire department went in there to put out the fire. They said that they could not find the head, arms, and legs of the body. And so the, the uh, church then said, well, this is real easy to figure out. It was done by that American shaman who's a satanic bishop. And uh, he... he in their rituals, they take the head, arms, and legs, and they use them in their ceremonies. And so that structure needs to be destroyed, and we got to make sure we get that guy. You know, it's like, uh-oh, you know, can't go back there for a while. 
and they ran with it. I mean, the neighborhood was just like up in arms, you know, neighborhood, but that region, you know, was just like, you know, really look at it, but nobody wanted to go in there. It was creating enough of a, of a problem to where the uh, military, now you got to understand some of these countries down there, military and police are like this, you know, and part of the same department, you know. And so they sent like a small force down there to investigate this. And in this structure had two levels, but of course no one wanted to put their head up into the second level, fearing it might come off like that other poor fellow in the in the neighboring property. And so the commander of that area or the, uh, that unit that was sent there went in and he went up into the second level and just sat there for a while and had some awesome visions, awesome, you know, insights on things and uh, told the man, the, the other shaman that I did this project with said that, that was probably one of the most beautiful experiences of my life and told everybody else that. And if anybody else wanted to go in there, it's totally fine. And just quelled that whole fear fire thing. And then he promptly went to the church, the cathedral in the area and said, stop this, stop it now, you know, and the church will listen to that particular force you know, fearing reprisal because it's that kind of a region. But I could imagine what would have happened to me if I was still in that area at that time, you know, because of that fear fire. And these are some of the things that we deal with. It's just amazing. So it goes back into that phenomenon. When I go to new areas to do like the energy healing circles, and they're not Reiki circles, they're com these things are completely different. I tell the people who bring me there, you know, the promoters, the people who have the venue, I said, we do this the way I tell you. You're going to see great results with the people, but you're also going to see this other phenomenon that's really kind of weird. I said, you're going to see this phenomenon on two sides. One of them is that one side where the people look at what we're going to do and they're going to go, wow. It works, you know, because we don't do any special symbols, no special anything. It's all power of the mind. So people have a tendency to just not believe it. They need, they think you need all this other stuff and all the theatrics and toning and whatever. No, you don't. And so they look at this so that one group goes, wow, it worked. And it's awesome. They're motivated. They want to engage, go deeper. But you also get that other element that goes, whoa, that worked. Okay, I got to go. They don't want to believe it. See, they want, they want the new age shamanism. They want the airy, fairy, heebie-jeebie, woo-woo, <laughs> you know, all that rainbows and unicorn stuff. No, real shamanism works. You know, it's powerful. It, it gets the job done. But you got to be the serious person to, to do it. So, um, with these projects like that, they get that fear factor in there, and the, the wow factor goes into the fear factor with the other side of the population, and they're the ones that just can't handle it. And that can become the danger for the person with the absolute best intentions, you know. And so you, you, you go in, you do your thing, you get out. And I tell the younger shamans, the, the, the new people new in the shamanism, like, don't stay in a place too long. You know, things can go very quick. You know, you got to release your project. You do the best you can with it, and then you go, because the human element is highly, highly unpredictable in its, in its level of results for the fear factor. And often unhospitable and sometimes fatal. We look back, you know, it was, when I lived next to Salem, you know, Massachusetts and going through the graveyards and getting a feel for things and you hear some of the stories, it was just, it was horrible. You know, all in the name of a loving God or peace or whatever, but it's just fear, fear, fear. That's all it is, it's just fear. So this is kind of a <clears throat> PSA, FYI for uh, people thinking about getting into shamanism. 
it can be an awesome life. I can tell you that. Um, the personal rewards are great. You know, you're not going to get rich doing real shamanism, that's for sure. You know, but... Okay, if anybody's got any questions, you know, like I said, leave them in the comments. It gives me food for other uh, videos. And... Oh, more weather coming in. Uh, share, like, subscribe. Um, if you'd like to help me and other shamans, you know, in the shamanic community, and you can always donate to me at Shaman Hawk at PayPal. And because a lot of people are doing different projects, and sometimes, you know, what comes into me goes into them, and then sometimes what comes from them goes to me, you know. So we, that's how we kind of sustain ourselves because. Uh, I'll, today I'll do another video about another project from another shaman and who's doing some really awesome work. And I'd like to see her get more community support from around the world. In that case, I have hungry farm animals to go feed and I will catch you guys later.